Hello there. It's another time for a biology lesson. Today we'll be looking at the topic reproduction. We'll start with the introduction. This video is about the introduction. There will be other videos where we'll talk more about reproduction, but this is the first. Now the objective of this lesson is to help learners define reproduction, state the relevance of reproduction, describe the two types of reproduction giving examples, state the advantages and disadvantages of the two modes of reproduction, and distinguish between the two types or modes of now moving on, reproduction. We'll attempt to answer the question, what is reproduction? Now, reproduction is a biological process by which organisms give birth or give rise to a new organism that is the same or similar to the parents. Now, the two modes or types of reproduction are sexual and asexual reproduction. Now, we can see here um, a diagram or picture that shows the, um, shows the two modes of reproduction, sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Now, reproduction is relevant for the following reasons. Reproduction ensures the continuity of the species and keeps it from becoming extinct. It plays a role in evolution as it creates variations via genetic recombinations. It helps to increase the number of species in the ecosystem. Now, moving along, we'll be talking about sexual reproduction. Now, sexual reproduction involves the fusion of the male gametes that is the sperm cell and the female gametes that is the ova or egg cell to form a zygote which later develops to a young offspring now in sexual reproduction male and female gametes are formed to produce an offspring these gametes are either formed by the same individual or by different individuals of the opposite sex now this process is usually slow and complex compared to a sexual reproduction the organisms so produced are genetically diverse, thus they can evolve along with the changing climatic conditions. Humans and many multicellular organisms exhibit a sexual mode of reproduction. As you can see here, this shows the sexual reproduction in plants and animals. Generally, in sexual reproduction in animals, we have the male gametes or the male sperm and the female gametes or the egg. Now, when they fuse together, they form a zygote. And the zygote, you know, goes through the process of uh, mitosis and cell division to form an embryo which continues over a period of time until the new offspring is formed, in the case of human beings, a baby. Now, sexual reproduction in plants is usually through the flower. The flower is the reproductive, is the sexual reproductive part of a plant, especially the flowering plants. Flowering plants are the only ones that undergo sexual reproduction now in this case you can see the structure of a flower which has the male part and the female you know organ the male organ is called the stamen which is made up of the anther and the filament while the female part called pistil or carpel is made up of the stigma which is the opening right here the style and also the ovary that contains the ovo so during sexual reproduction Pollination of course, which helps to transfer the pollen grain from the anther to the stigma. This is an example of a bisexual flower. So there is a movement of the pollen grain to the stigma of the same flower through the process called pollination. Now, once the pollen grain gets to the stigma, there's a pollen tube that forms, you know, from the top right here, even to the ovary, where the male gamete is pushed down through the pollen tube that is formed by the pollen grain, the male reproductive gamete, uh, cell goes down and enters into the ovule. Now inside the ovule there is fertilization. Fertilization occurs and once fertilization occurs, it forms what we call a zygote right here. And that zygote will continue to multiply till it forms an embryo. And within that embryo, the ovule will turn to a seed now once that seed is formed if you take that seed and you put it into the soil it will germinate to form a new plant altogether and that is how sexual reproduction in plants works now moving along we'll be looking at asexual reproduction what is a sexual reproduction 
A sexual reproduction is the type of reproduction in which new organisms are produced from a single parent without production or fusion of gametes. Therefore, the offspring produced are genetically identical to the parent. The organisms produced by sexual reproduction are less diverse in nature. This type of reproduction is practiced widely by unicellular organisms. Yes, the example that we saw earlier was the one for Hydra. Now, the process involved involves rapid population growth and no meat is required for the process. However, a lack of genetic diversity makes organisms more susceptible to disease and nutritional deficiencies. Now, we are going to be exploring the various examples of sexual, asexual reproduction. Now, we have binary fusion, budding, fragmentation, spore formation, and vegetative propagation. These are all types of asexual reproduction. Now, binary fusion. In this type of asexual reproduction, the cell splits into two. Into two. Each cell carrying a copy of the DNA from the parent cell. In other words, you know, uh, the organisms formed are exact copies of their parents. Now, examples of organisms that carry a binary fusion is amoeba. Now, in budding, a small bud-like outgrowth gives rise to new individual. The outgrowth remains attached to the organism until it is fully grown. It detaches itself and lives as an individual organism. Example of organism that carry out budding is hydra. Whereas in fragmentation, the parent organism splits into several parts and each part grows into a new individual. Example, we have the planaria worm. In spore formation, a new organism grows from the spores. From spores. This can be created without fertilization and can spread through wind and animals. Examples of organisms that carry out spore formation, we have the mushroom and the mold. Now, in case of vegetative propagation, is an a sexual method of plant reproduction that occurs in its leaves, roots, and stem. This can occur through fragmentation and regeneration of specific vegetative parts of plants. Now, this um, is a pictorial representation of a, a sexual reproduction. Now, you have budding taking place in Hydra, where you have the outgrowth, which grows gradually and matures until it detaches itself from the parent plant. Here is a pictorial representation of fragmentation where we have uh, the starfish in which you know fragments are cut off and new organisms are formed from the fragments now these are a pictorial representation of spore formation where you have the mold uh, or the, yes where you have the mold and the spores here you know they are taken uh, they are taken away by wind or water once it lands on a a favorable spot it will grow to a new individual whereas in fission example here we have paramecium paramecium is an organism that also uh, reproduces through binary fission so you can see right here that from one paramecium you have two daughter cells now moving along we'll also be talking about the advantages and disadvantages of the sexual and sexual modes of reproduction Starting with a sexual reproduction, let's look at um, the advantages right here. The population can be increased rapidly when conditions are right. Um, a sexual reproduction can exploit suitable environments quickly. More time and it is time and energy efficient. And reproduction is completed much faster than sexual reproduction. Now looking at the disadvantage, you can see that the, because of the limited genetic variation in population, offspring are genetically identical to their parents. The population is vulnerable to changes in condition and may only be suited for one habitat. And finally, disease is likely to affect the whole population as there is no genetic variation. Now moving on to the pros and cons or advantages and disadvantages of sexual mode of reproduction. The advantages right here says that increase, there is increase in genetic or variation in offspring. And the species can adapt to new environment due to this variation giving them uh, giving them a survival advantage now diseases are less likely to affect the population due to variation now the disadvantages it takes more time and energy to find mates 
and it's also difficult for isolated members of species to reproduce. Now finally we'll be looking at the differences between a sexual and sexual mode of reproduction. Now following the characteristics, definition, sexual reproduction is the type of reproduction in which sex cells are formed that come together during fertilization to form a zygote. In a sexual reproduction, this is a type of reproduction in which one cell divides into two cells. There is no fusion or fertilization of cells involved. Looking at the characteristic type of cell division, me meiosis occurs in sexual reproduction where four haploid cells from one diploid parent cells are formed. Whereas in a sexual reproduction, the type of cell division that takes place is mitosis, where two diploid cells are formed from one diploid parent cell. Now looking at the characteristic genetic variation, in sexual reproduction, genetic variation is extensive. It is introduced during meiosis and fertilization, whereas in a sexual reproduction, genetic variation is, lim is limited and is only introduced by random mutation. Looking at the characteristic population growth rate, sexual reproduction is slow, while the sexual reproduction is fast. Looking at time involved, the time involved in sexual reproduction is longer, while the, the one in the sexual reproduction is shorter. Now let's look at the characteristic energy involved. Now in sexual reproduction, a lot of energy is involved, especially in animals who have courtship displays to try to attract a partner. Whereas in a sexual mode of reproduction, energy involved is very little as a partner does not need to be found. Now examples, in sexual reproduction, plants, animals, fungi and protists undergo sexual reproduction. Whereas in a sexual reproduction, bacteria and protists undergo a sexual mode of reproduction. Now with this, we've come to the end of our lesson for today. Let's take a quick look at the summary. Reproduction is the biological process by which organisms give birth or give rise to a new organism that is the same or similar to the parent. The two modes of reproduction are sexual and asexual reproduction. Now, reproduction is relevant for the continuity of species and keeps it from becoming extinct. Sexual reproduction involves the fusion of male and female gametes to form a zygote which later develops to a young offspring. A sexual reproduction is the type of reproduction in which new organisms are produced from a single parent without production or fusion of gametes. Examples of this mode are budding, fragmentation, spore formation, binary fusion, and vegetative propagation. One major difference between sexual and asexual mode of reproduction is the fact that one requires two parents while the other requires only one Now before parent. we go, I want you to pause this video and go through this assessment to find out how much of the lesson that you have imbibed and I will see you again in the next lesson. Bye bye.